Hello and welcome to a Powerline Systems video on modeling multiple span guys to a single pole in PLS CAD. PLS pole makes modeling down guys or span guy configurations very easy, but to attach two structures to a single stub pole requires additional steps. This modeling method can also apply to more advanced scenarios, such as underbuilt distribution and span guys attaching to the same poles. Since this is a slightly more advanced topic and Powerline Systems has already created several other resources on pole framing and structure spotting, I will be doing this example with pole and CAD models that I have created beforehand. I will first show what the natural thought process for modeling this situation is, and then I will show how to model this correctly. To start this example, we have a multiple pole model with span guys. As you can see, PLS Pole has the ability to model multiple poles with span guys attaching to a single stub pole. By navigating to Geometry, PLS CAD, Insulator Link, I can see that the PLS CAD Insulator Link table is also populated with sets and phases, so we would expect the ability to be able to string wire to both structures. My model to demonstrate this concept is set up with an alignment and two dead-end structures. When I put this structure in PLS CAD and try to string wire to it, I am unable to string to both structures. The reason for this is because PLS CAD only allows me to string a conductor to a structure once. We can string a head and back spans to a structure when using dead end sets, but we cannot string to two tangent sets or between two dead end sets on the same structure. Now we are left with the dilemma of how to string wire to both of these structures and have the program perform the analysis correctly. This is best done with three individual pole models. Instead of using span guys and PLS pole for both structures, we are going to use steel conductor in PLS CAD to connect the single poles to the stub pole. This will require a few adjustments to these models, as we will need to set the model up for conductors to be strung where the span guys currently are. I'll first go to a structure model with a conductor carrying pole. In my clamps geometry dialog found at geometry insulators clamps, I can add clamps on this pole to attach the steel wire to. My attachment heights are the same as I was using for span guys, which I added in the wood pole geometry dialog. Now I need to go to geometry PLS CAD insulator link to create a set to string to in PLS CAD. I'll go with something obvious like set numbers of 59 and 60 with a phase of 1 for both. You'll also need to make sure that the clamps are dead ends. There will be no stringing through these clamps. The models with the conductor carrying poles are set up. Now we'll take the same principles and apply them to the stub pole. Again, we are just finding a way to make a structural connection using wires. I already have my attachment points set, I just need to add my clamps to connect the steel wire too. Again, I navigate to Geometry, Insulators, Clamps to add my clamps to my previously created attachment points. You can see that I have four clamps attached to this pole. Clamps are unique in that I cannot add two of them to the same attachment point. For this situation, I simply added another attachment point at a distance of 0.1 feet away from the other attachment points. This will be close enough to mimic a single attachment point without getting the attachment point location warning. Again, I navigate to Geometry PLS CAD Insulator Link to verify that I have my insulators linked for PLS CAD use. Since I have four clamps to link, I used 57 through 60 for set numbers with phases of one for all. At this point, I have everything I need to complete this model. Instead of removing my previous work from the PLS CAD model, I'll go to Lines, Edit, and select a line layer that has my dead ends and all structures with wires strung to both structures. Now the only part I'm missing is my span guys between the structures. To add this, I'll use the sections add graphical command. I'll use a typical 60 degree initial stringing case and I'll add my same 3 8 inch steel shield wire that I was planning to use for my span guys. For my install tension, I use 5% of the rated breaking strength for span guys in PLS pole. This equates to 770 pounds, which I'll put in my stringing tension. I'm using 5% as an estimation. The PLS pole manual recommends a value of 2% to 5% of rated breaking strength, or at least a value greater than the self-weight of the wire. 
This is an approximation as most construction crews will not install guys with a specific sag or tension value. The suggested values are typically enough to pull the slack out of the wire. I'll string from my structure to the stub pole for both span guides. The final step is to run this in SAP's level 4 analysis. I'll go to Criteria, SAP's Finite Element Sag Tension, and click the L4 checkbox. Why is that important? In a typical structure check, PLS CAD opens PLS pole in the background and performs a structure check. In this example, we are checking two structures and using the interaction with the conductors in PLS CAD to determine the structural capacity. I'll leave everything else unchecked. Appendix N of the PLS CAD manual covers L4 analysis and how it works. Powerline Systems also has a video on using FE analysis, which is linked in the description below. Now when I go to my 3D view of the structure, I see that the wires are not connected to the insulators. This is because the pole is deflecting under this load. To show this after the analysis is run, I will go to Structures, Loads, Toggle Graphical Display of Deformed Geometry for Method 4 Structure Checks. Now the attachment points will line up with the wire position after I run an analysis. Now to perform an analysis on this, I can perform a structure check for a range of structures, or I can individually check structures. I'll use the Structure Usage Report found at Lines, Reports, Structure Usage Report. I'll just perform a check on my three structures since I'm not concerned with the dead ends. I want to point out something while I run this analysis. We see sometimes that users will create separate models, but instead of connecting the models with wire in PLS CAD as I have done, they will model the span guys with down guys, setting the azimuth, slope, and length to replicate the location of the span guy wire. In my example of this modeling technique, you can see that the down guys go off into space. If I were to add this to PLS CAD, you would see that my guys mimic span guys. This can be fine if you are not concerned with the strength of the stub pole and assume that the stub pole is infinitely stiff, which will be less conservative for a conductor carrying pole analysis. In some cases this is okay, and that is always up to engineering judgment, but in this example I want the most accurate results possible. Now we see that our structures have both passed the structure check. I can also see that my structure has deflected to meet the wire position. If I am satisfied with those results, I can change back into L2 analysis and continue working in the model. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at powline.com. To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com. And for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.